<laughs> How you guys doing? Well, you look terrific. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, though. Is your microphone muted? At the top, there's a microphone if you put the mouse up on it. Yeah, are you there? That looks like it's muted now. Uh, let's see here. Uh... Hey, are you there? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. We did Back it. Ahead. Good job, everybody. Figuring Sorry out, about that. Figure out talking. Google Plus. <laughs> Dude, I do at least one of these shows every week, and there's always some fucking problem. So um, it's always different, but there's we always got something. The power of friendship. Yeah, we we just uh, hey. we didn't, neither one of us had a Google Plus account, so we had to just to, you know. Get it, get it, get it going. <laughs> yeah, it happens. So, how are you guys doing? I'm doing very well, dude. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm doing good. So, um, there's all sorts of stuff here to chat it up about. But um, first off, uh, let's just talk about Return to Newcomb High and how that whole thing happened. Uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, where do you want us to start, pal? I mean, anywhere you want. I mean, like, basically, how did you guys get involved in it? I'm assuming it had something to do with Mr. Bricks, but I could be completely wrong on that. All right, so you can start on this one, buddy. Oh, not really. You, you were involved before me. Not well, even. Mr. Br I mean, you know, Mr. Bricks happened, like, two years before Nuke even started, so I was like, you know, you were, you were in it before. You, you okay, were in it before I did. You were I was, before I did. I was right. a trauma <laughs> intern for a couple of years prior to nice. making uh, Return to Nukem High. And, and what does that um, entail, for those of you that uh, don't know? As uh, Lloyd Kaufman's silent partner, Michael Hurge, would put, you do shit work. You clean the toilets, you get us coffee. It's shit work. Are you okay with that? Uh, so I did shit work at Trauma <laughs> for a few years, and uh, I came back to audition for uh, Nukem High, and uh, I was a little crazier and a little dumber than everybody else and also a little more willing to... Uh, to get naked, so I wound up uh, carving myself a role in the Troma universe. Well, so wasn't someone else there the day you got naked? Was it the village was the village post there? Yeah, I had to get naked. Yeah. My first audition where I got naked, I had to get naked for the Village Voice village for voice, a, uh, a, a cover story, and they printed a naked picture of me in the Village Voice. Uh, the week my dad was in town it was pretty sweet. <laughs> there, there you go. Wow, that's awesome! Only at Troma. Oh, huh? you can, uh, Vito, you can uh, fill in your half. Well, after the auditions were going on, and uh, uh, my buddy, who I, uh, Justin E. Martell, who was the producer on the movie, he was brought in to produce Return to Newcomb High, and we had worked together. We worked, she worked together for many, many years on Mr. Bricks, and uh, he uh, he. Uh, what's the word? He applied linguistic pressure upon me to come audition. And so, uh, and I came and I auditioned for uh, Chelsea Holland, the casting director. And uh, it was kind of like just the audition process is like, you know, you know, either come as you are, tell a story, be yourself, or perform a monologue. And, you know, uh, I opted to perform a monologue and perform my monologue and then got called back. They gave me a monologue. They gave me a monologue from the script. It was new. It was like written specifically for me. And then I just uh, did it and I got cast. 
Nice. It was a. It, Do you feel that the movie is more of a sequel or more of just like a remake of the whole deal with Nukem High? I I would call it a reimagining, uh, in that uh, timeline wise, it definitely happens after the original Nukem mm -hmm. High, but it's essentially a very similar story. So it's an updated version. But especially once you see Volume Two, you realize there is a uh, a canon, and that these characters actually fit into the Troma universe of the original Nukem High, and uh, everything's kind of all related. That's awesome. Um, is how long was the shoot? How long were you guys actually working on it? Because I'm sure you guys did more than just act in it, right? Oh no, I I just acted. He <laughs> he he, this man. Uh, Vito was the uh, the onset coach. He worked out with all the actors and uh, made sure everybody on screen that had to look good did look good, uh, because he is the Chris Benoit of trauma. He will stare you in the eye and make you do squats until you pee blood. Respect. Uh, Respect. I, I was. Uh, oh, I broke him. There we go. Uh, I was the uh, hired as second AD on the film, and I wound up getting associate director. Uh, so what that means is uh, I, I had to make sure everything is what Lloyd wanted until he changed his mind and then had to make sure it was what he wanted the second time. I had an unofficial title of maybe being psychiatrist for a few people. They would come vent to me, and I would just listen to them. Uh, we were on set. I went up uh, yeah. <laughs> the beginning of June last summer and got back uh, in that September. And I had two days' notice to know that I, was, uh, I got the part and I was going up. So uh, it was about... Oh. Three months we were up there. The actors were there about a month and a half with rehearsals because we had a very long rehearsal period. Which I, 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 I enjoyed. That was actually the funnest part. Now, uh, um, is that uh, something typical for Lloyd, doing a ton of rehearsals? He, he, he wants that. No, yeah, that's kind of Lloyd's yeah. deal is he wants us up there uh, getting used to each other and getting relationships. He basically wants everybody to have a huge bond by the time he's there. And uh, in, in no small part uh, was that added to by the fact that uh, all 80 of us lived in an abandoned funeral home together. Uh, so it was uh, pretty pretty wonderful to have uh, uh, what about 45 dudes all sleep on the floor of a uh, mausoleum floor uh, right next to each other like little lambs. Apparently we got a little too used to it because now we live together. Yeah, now... Uh, <laughs> We couldn't stop sleeping next to each other, so we decided to get a place. And you know, one day we'll move up to a small dog. <laughs> well, you guys make it yeah. sound uh, very pleasing. Um, well, actually, awesome. uh, Joe, the guy that you, uh, Joe, Joe, you've been yeah, talking yeah, to. Okay, okay. He, was, right, he was right. He was he was on the opposite side of me. It was Joe, me, and then Zach. Yeah, so, like, we all kind of slept on the we were all slept on the floor. So it was, you know. Just to, uh, just let you know. <laughs> just sleeping on yoga mats like goddamn gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, and you guys, uh, I believe it's Vito's movie, A Science Team. Do you want to talk a little bit oh, yeah. about that? Like, when <sighs> is that coming out? When it, what's it about? Well, uh... My character, Chip, is uh, just broken up with his girlfriend in the movie, and he decides to go home to Mama. But uh, Mama has been uh, brutally, brutally murdered by an alien. And then, and then I have to deal with a, a government-operated team called Science Team that has come in to take care of the alien. And there's uh, insanity ensues after that. <laughs> it's kind of like the most simplest way to put it, <laughs> is it's insanity, you know? You take a and Kubrick that, film that and you give it done, some steroids, right? huh? That movie's done. That movie is done. It's been uh, it's premiered in uh, Philly and uh, in Canada. Uh, Science Team was made by Drew Bulduk, oh, who yeah, did Drew the Bulduk. trauma movie The Taint. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's the best trauma out of house production in the last twenty years. It's absolutely brilliant. Even and better than Father's Day. Oh, tons better than Father's Day. Uh, it's ab <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> And uh, it's actually, if anybody in the New York City area wants to see uh, Science Team, it's going to be premiering at Troma Dance uh, the end of June at the Paper Box Theater in Brooklyn, uh, the new Troma Dance Film Festival. Uh, Science Team will be one of the uh, the leading films uh, that we are championing this year. And from time to time, I play Brock Lesnar, and he talks as Paul Heyman. So it's, yeah. Whenever yeah, I forget something, sexy. he comes in. That's good mm -hmm. stuff, man. 
Um, as far as uh, breaking up the two Nukem High movies, how is that different than um, Toxic Avenger 2 and 3? Um, it's definitely different in that um, it's one story, so it's much more like um, an event film, kind of like Kill Bill. Like, in Toxie 2 and 3, there's not really any stakes between 2 and 3. Like, at the end of 2, you're not like, I need to see 3 right now. Yeah. Uh, at the end of Return to Nukem High Volume 1, you absolutely need to see Volume 2. It's a real, uh, it really makes you edge. Uh, so, very much like Kill Bill. And, in fact, once you see both of them, you'll realize there's a lot uh, having to do with the uh, the split with Kill Bill. It's, they were always meant to be uh, one event film and viewed in two parts like that. That was Lloyd's uh, intention from the very beginning, uh, almost from the time we got there. Right on. Good, good, good. And when is part two coming out? Uh, part two's coming out when it's done. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we have some extra things that are going to be happening. Uh, you know, uh, we part one did so well that actually we uh, were afforded the opportunity to go and uh, do some pickup shots, and there's going to be some additional deaths, some additional nudity. And uh, it's funny because volume two is where all the deaths and the nudity already were, uh, but we're double downing on it. So uh, you're actually uh, going to get a whole lot more for your money. So everybody that liked volume one is going to love volume two, and if you hated volume one, uh, volume two is going to make you kill yourself. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it, yeah. Now, isn't it supposed to play it can? Uh, volume 2, the uh, product reel, I believe, is going to play it can. There may oh. be a version of Volume 2 that screens it can, uh, but there is additional things that are uh, yet to happen as far as the uh, completing completing the production. Because Lloyd's a perfectionist, like Kubrick, you know. Definitely. And um, I notice... Uh, and we can only hope this is his eyes wide shut, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did uh, notice that there's a documentary called um, Occupy Can that you guys um, are also a part of. Now, it, are we safe to assume that's kind of the same thing as, uh, um, what was it, All the Love You Can? Is that what it was called? It is very safe to say that uh, Occupy Can is a code name for All the Love You Can Part 2. Uh, we went up to the Can Film Festival last year to premiere Return to Newcomb High Volume 1, and we ran a grassroots campaign for the premiere. We had no money. It was a whole ton of us in a little apartment uh, having parades up and down the Quazet every day and uh, doing different uh, street actions and performances to make sure we sold out every screening of the movie. Uh, I can't speak for everything that happened, but I will say I did streak the Great Gatsby premiere uh, to prom promote our screening. Uh, that day, and we sold it out. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole lot more of the, the boobs, blood, and booze, and chaos. If you liked All the Love You Can, it's essentially uh, how we did it 20 years later in the in the digital age. There's boobs? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, as far as the shooting goes, what kind of, did anything traumatic happen that um, set you guys back, or um, freak disasters, or um, did Niagara Falls dry up, or anything like that that you guys would like to share? And yeah, I said traumatic. I don't uh, know we we uh, created a we we certainly created a, a very uh, a tittering notion in the community of Niagara Falls. Uh, Niagara Falls, the New York side. It's kind of like Twin Peaks without any of the good-looking people. Uh, it's a horror show. It's the worst. It's a, they could save AMC could save so much money if they just shot The Walking Dead there. Uh, <laughs> so we essentially just took over this uh, awful town, and uh, it, people were not thrilled with us. Uh, it got to the point where people I I was walking around yeah. trying to to flyer uh, for our big uh, scene, and I got egged. Oh, I, uh, by some local youth. Seeger got egged as a bunch well of us just got standing egged. in front of the, the funeral home. Yeah, he people come by well. and egg us, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, like, when you drive so far into New York, you're in Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, unfortunately, we were the we were the captains of the faggot mobile. Uh, so uh, it, was, it was an interesting shoot. And then, actually, where we stayed, 
was the Magadino Funeral Home. Uh, it was an abandoned funeral home that we took over and turned into our office space, uh, production space, uh, special effects workshop, and our living space. And it was owned by a, a mob boss named Stefano Magadino, who was known as The Undertaker. Uh, and uh, the old urban legend was one body would go in in the coffin and two would go out. And uh, we had a number of paranormal investigators come to tell us all different stories. And I had to stay there with just two other people for about two weeks. And it was terrifying because the place was haunted as shit. I don't believe it. That's just... Vito doesn't believe it. Vito also didn't see puffs of smoke going out the door when nobody was home. He didn't hear people come in the door you when the doors were locked. You were some kind of smoke, okay? Not in the that. funeral home because okay. we had a contract. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh my the, whole place noises. the whole place was terrifying, and there was a lot of uh, uh, murders and suicides, and uh, in in the building for years and years well, and there years. Was one room, there was like one room specifically, right? There was one room specifically where we shot the beginning of uh, Volume One, the meltdown scene where the uh, beautiful young man yeah. gets his manhood ripped off, uh, and a number of investigators came and told us about uh, suicides that had occurred in that room during different funerals, and it was definitely a creepy place to be. Wow, man. Um, what there was, was also your, a string of murders in Niagara Falls while we were there. Oh, yeah. As if our life wasn't enough like the movie Terror Firmer. We, we had to, like, uh, <laughs> we had, to go we, on we had a buddy system going on. Yeah, you couldn't leave the place by yourself. We, we had to go on lockdown because yeah. they were finding heads in dumpsters while we were up there. And they never caught who did it. So I'm going to assume it was Babette Bombshell. Uh, and God but bless her for getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Just out at bed. Babs oh. has been outed for years, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, what was your um, favorite scene to shoot? Uh, my face-off with uh, Pritchard, the original head Cretan. He made a cameo as a cop, and uh, I got to got to send him packing. <laughs> it was a very it was a very it was a very good day. It was a very, it was a very good day. It was a, uh, cause he, he came on set and everybody was like, Pritchard's here, man. Pritchard's here. Oh my god. <laughs> I was uh, very. I would say any, of, yeah, that was, that was that was the coolest cameo. It, it was there, it was almost there nothing was a, though. A lot of really great cameos in it. That was yeah, and there's tons of people that people don't even notice. Like all the bad guys from Return to New uh, from Clash of Newcom High two and three are all in it. Uh, Dan Snow, who plays Cigar Face in Toxic Avenger. Uh, but there's tons of little trauma cameos that people don't realize. Caleb Emerson from Poultry Guys and Citizen Toxie plays one of the security guards in the metal detector scene. Um, yeah. there's a ton of people. He's from, a very nice guy. Yeah. He's, he's, he's awesome. He's a sweet guy. Just to come in for that, he was a sweet guy. Yeah, he was, he was great. He was um, what was the longest scene to shoot? Probably I, think, I, I think your long, but your longest scene is in volume two that I don't even think we should talk about. The uh, well, actually, it's in the it's in the trailer. That wasn't the longest. I'd say that, that, that emotionally, that might have been one. Have been. I had a, I'm naked for most of volume two. Uh, like most of the movie, I'm fully naked. I get my clothes stolen. Can't find them and then lose them again. It, okay, it got it got to the point where I had absolutely no problem with him being naked. If it just became, I was just like, he's naked, big Who deal. Would? I see a ring. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had to. Um, I'll, I'll I'll spoil alert. I I have to uh, sing a song naked in the Cretan lair, and I we had to do so many takes because they said the sinking was off. And I was just standing in a crowd full of extras in Cretan wear, completely naked. Well, you had no wear. You were just naked. No, they were in Cretan Okay. Stuff, I was and I was completely naked having to sing the same song over and over and over again and trying to make my balls bounce to the music. Uh, and it was just the longest, hottest night in the summer. Now, for um, nudity on a trauma film, in between takes... Do you get a robe or a fluffer or... Uh, you get a blanket handed to you by two fucking mad juggalos that are mad they have to touch a sweaty naked guy. <laughs> Actually, was, there was a lot of things where all you did was just kind of cuff yourself. Yeah, most takes I just... on Facebook, there's a picture of me and him, and he's just there kind of... <clears throat> himself. Most takes I just fucking tuck them in my palm because, you know, I'm white and have that gift. But you were so polite. It was like, you were like, very polite because you were just kind of like, okay, I'm naked. 
it was very it was very polite of you to just kind of cover up because there were now girls. is it different for the ladies when they're doing nude scenes? Yeah, they're handled with a little more couth, and uh, we're very very respectful to uh, any girls that do uh, any any nude scenes in a trauma movie. You get a robe, a blanket, a closed set, so there's no you know looky lose and uh, you know only uh, necessary people. Uh, I I was definitely the only person who had the nightmare nudity experience. Uh, all the females were afforded a lot of privacy and and care, and you know treated like uh, what's the word human beings. Yeah, <laughs> human beings. Yeah. So was it so bad that you wouldn't do it again? I'm doing it right now. You, I just the camera doesn't go that low. Uh, I no, I, I don't get it. And I don't care anymore. I. You know, I take my dick out all the time. It was nothing new for me. I used to play in a, a punk band, and I used to get naked on stage all the time. So uh, it was all water under the bridge. I am. Uh, I was born without the curse of shame. So uh, you know where that twist is on to make you pull out his dick. So yeah, it's it's my number one move. <laughs> <laughs> so as far you go as to, uh, you might want to say hello with it, you just might be like hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As far as all of this stuff that people have to put in their mouth in a trauma movie, um, was any of the stuff super yummy? Was this any of the stuff the nastiest stuff ever that you were vomiting a little bit as it was in there? Um, there was all sorts um, of gooey green and taco-y things. Well, the oh, tacos were oatmeal. The yeah. tacos were oatmeal. I had a good time. I, I enjoyed eating those tacos. The tacos were oatmeal. <laughs> um, the only... Slime that I didn't taste was the one the two actresses, Asta and Katie, had because um, Asta has a gluten allergy. Uh, if you talk about gluten, she has to talk about herself. Uh, that's the allergy. Whoa. <laughs> same. Same. <laughs> She's never going to listen to it. Don't worry. Uh, uh, so she had uh, non. She had like vanilla pudding, I believe, non uh, gluten free vanilla pudding uh, that she could she uh, had have. Vanilla pudding? Yeah, her slime was vanilla pudding. Damn. And what's the normal slime consist of? Um, I think it's, it's just the uh, depending on what it is. The um, uh, the one that like explodes that's Brahma seltzer food coloring yeah. water. If they don't have Brahma seltzer, it's Alka seltzer food coloring that's and what water. I had. I had a lot of that. Yeah, mostly Alka seltzer yeah. food coloring and water, uh, which is only a pain in the ass. Like if you've done it a few times, like because then it starts to get make you gassy. And I'm already gassy to begin with. Yeah, we're so, gassy yeah. gasses. Now, how do um, multiple takes go with that? Because I'm sure the food coloring um, stains skin and stains pretty much everything it comes in contact with. So how would you guys do that? In sequence. So uh, once you puked, you puked. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Robin Watkins, who played the general and poultry guys, pretty much had two suits for the movie. He had one clean suit and one suit that he could get stuff on. And uh, that tends to be the protocol. Like, uh, don't get shit on yourself until you're ready to have shit on you for the rest of the movie. But luckily, because he's a perfectionist like Kubrick, Lloyd shoots in sequence. So once you're gross, you're gross, and you're gross for the rest of the movie. Or in your case, you were... You, you, I you showed up gross. Course. Yeah, you sh No, no, but he kept himself gross. You I kept... Did. You didn't clean you... He, the... the, the what was it again? Roast beef that you ate? Yeah, I, I had a I the T-shirt I wear in the movie. I did not wash the entire time we were up there. Oh my god! Uh, so that it, I would, so that people would be more and more because I was supposed to be disgusting. So by the end of the shoot, I had to keep my shirt in like three plastic bags because it was so gross. Whoa, you did? Yeah, it didn't help, brother. No, no, I mean when it wasn't on me. It didn't help. No, I know. I was just it's... stinky. Just a stinky man. That's awesome. <laughs> so, it... but I also used my, my musk to attract the various. You know, overweight ladies of Buffalo and Niagara Falls, so it worked. They yeah, were looking for the beef, and they got you. But actually, so, it was a funny moment between uh, you and Katie. Remember the? Uh, no. You know, because she's a vegetarian. Remember? Oh yeah, well, cool. Katie, who go. plays um, who plays Lauren in the movie, is a vegetarian. So in the scene where I had to ask her out, I took roast beef and put it in my fingernails and kept trying to touch her face the entire scene. Yeah, so oh, when you watch the reverse cut. Uh, when you watch the movie, if you look at any reaction shots to her, as my hand gets closer, you can actually see in her eyes the meat about to touch her face and how grossed out she is by me. Was that your decision to do that? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a true thespian and a performer. 
classically I'm classically trained in the Kaufman School of Acting. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, now, when you're talking about um, shooting everything in sequence, um, do you literally mean everything shot in sequence, or is it like everything at the cafeteria, or everything at um, the school is shot in order, and then you go out of sequence as you go through that location? Well, everything that, that we do in that day, you know, was, that was because like the, the cafeteria stuff, we filmed all the cafeteria, the cafeteria stuff there. All the auditorium stuff, we filmed all of that in sequence. It was, it was, it was like you just said. It, was like, it goes location yeah. by location. You're pretty yeah. much in, the Cre the Cretan, in order. The Cretan Lair, we shot all that in two days. In, oh, two nights, actually. We shot all that stuff in two nights. So we, we, we filmed up to a point, stopped, came back, and then we finished the scene. The rule of a Tron movie is you knock out the big sex scenes first. That way those are in the can. Nobody's that nervous anymore. I mean, they don't back up. And that way in case they quit halfway <laughs> through the movie... Because Lloyd had a problem, you know, way back in the day when he was originally making films where they would shoot half the movie and then it would come to the nude scene and the girl would go, no, all of a sudden. And he couldn't fire because they already shot half the movie. Wasn't that a Citizen yeah. Citizen Tom's? No. No, that was like a 70s, 80s problem he had with but like squeeze play. Citizen Tom's, yeah. But so he, uh, he learned that uh, now he shoots, he knocks out the big sex scenes first and then uh, goes back to everything else. Right on. Um... Have you guys noticed your life changing now that you've done this movie? No, my girlfriend's still fat. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's bad. I mean, we're get, we're uh, we're getting random love from people, and yeah, not we get, like not, not we get wonderful people yeah. like all the time. Um, it's it's awesome, man, because like it's finally you get to be a part of something that you grew up watching. And totally. to be able to affect people's lives, it's really cool. And and, 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 we, awesome. and we've made an effort to actually try to, you know, those that are cool and those that are, like, you know, be friends with them. You know, yeah, people be that friends or get them involved with our yeah. projects that we're, we have currently going on and bring fans of Newcomb High onto everything we make with us. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you guys have going on? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, buddy. Hit it. I mean, that science team. I mean, we also, we just did a RumbleCon. Uh, we just uh, shot a 15-minute short called RumbleCon. It's a pro wrestling buddy comedy. Uh, uh, Vito and I play a tag team uh, called Twisted Justice. Boom. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the whole movie takes place at a uh, 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 autograph convention where we get in a fight with another pro wrestler uh, over the uh, who gets to sign the most autographs. And uh, it's something we're very, very proud of. It's going to be premiering at the BAM, uh, the Brooklyn Art Museum, on uh, May the 12th, uh, next ne uh, next Monday. And uh, from there, it's going to be at a bunch of festivals, and uh, hopefully one day we're going to get to make it into a feature. That would be awesome, man. So I hear you guys do enjoy the sport of wrestling, yes? Yeah, we're pretty obsessed with it. I mean, we, okay. I was I was watching Legends of Wrestling like uh, 45 minutes ago. <laughs> nice. So let me ask you a couple questions to totally... Um, kill half of our audience right here. Um, Five inches, but it's thick in the middle. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Lesnar beating Undertaker. What did you think? Did you see that coming? Oh, God. We were so fuck. We were... Can we curse? I'm sorry. Can we curse yeah, now? cuss it up, dude. I, no, I'm just saying, it. my God, if you were here... Oh. It was... We couldn't... It was... Absolute stunned silence, and then we were just calling people for about an hour, going, "Can you believe that just happened?" The director of RumbleCon called. We called them, and we were like, "We had like a it was a wow." Well, and the director of RumbleCon's white trash from Florida, so it was like his day. JFK got shot; like he couldn't handle it. It was too much for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, literally, man. That was that. That was a moment in time. It was like. Uh, are, are you a part of the camp that thinks that that was not supposed to happen? Oh. Even and if, you know, he still like did it. it. That's the thing. If it wasn't supposed to happen, Undertaker could have had a heart attack and died, and Brock Lesnar would have landed under him and gotten his paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Brock Lesnar doesn't give a shit. He's got to go back to his fucking house in the woods and blow loads in Sable and punch deer in the face. <laughs> Creating the new white race out in the middle of nowhere. It's always... <laughs> oh shit! So, um, WrestleMania in general, what did you guys think about it? 
It's the best one I've ever watched live. I, I absolutely loved it beginning to end. It had all the wow factor. It was a great production. It wasn't bogged down by a bunch of bullshit music performances or a bunch of skits I didn't care about. Well, the musical performances that were there... Yeah, yeah enhanced it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was very happy with everything uh, from Triple H wrestling like he was in New Japan in 1992, throwing out a Tiger best, best opening match since Brett Owen. Owen. Best one. Best one. And then uh, Cesaro getting his big moment, letting the world know he's a future, you know. I remember we, we were coming up with so many different theories about how they would use Cesaro. And it was yeah. just kind of like, oh, he's going to big swing the big show. He's going to do this, that, and this. And, you know, and it ended real happy. It was WrestleMania uh, three relived. That was like it was there, man. it, it was, was the best one I've ever watched live. It was the of the modern era. It was the most satisfied I've ever been, and by that maybe the first one I didn't hate. Do you feel that the uh, Daniel Bryan victory was at all spoiled with the Undertaker loss? Maybe for the live crowd, not for us. I don't. I don't know. The live crowd got into it at the it's, end. I mean. They were still there. I mean, they're probably looking for the pick me up. They were like, "Please, God, don't, don't let Daniel lose." Now we don't need both of this. We don't need both. Yeah, but I mean, it could have been worse. I, it's Batista looks like a shaved cat. I don't know if you ever noticed that. The it looks huge like huge ears. <laughs> the huge ears. Uh, he's Did terrified not. to look at. It's not, whatever he is, it's not human. It's like he doesn't have the body of a person. Uh, so I was, I was really afraid of what they were going to do. Uh, but no, I was really satisfied and, you know. Well, we, wouldn't you agree that the loss of Taker now kind of adds this element of anything goes. I Nothing thought it was anymore. really uh, poignant when uh, right after the Shield squash New Age Outlaws and Kane when uh, I think it was JBL. Well, well JBL said JBL. you just watched the death of the Attitude Era uh, which he was certainly right about. Uh, it literally was the changing of the guard, and um, For real. I thought that was very, very interesting. It was like it was the night of new stars, and it was uh, a bunch of people that I, I really look forward to getting to watch for a number of years. Yeah, um, I am Great. very excited about where it's going. I'm just a little uh, about what's happening at the moment, but I, like I don't know if they I don't know if they necessarily know what's happening at the moment. Well, the last time somebody won. The title and a triple threat, and then went on right on to feud with Kane out of nowhere. It went really well. <laughs> okay, can we admit how weird it is that his name's Daniel? Is that no one gonna note that it's so weird? <laughs> that his name is Daniel. I've been having a lot of these discussions. With it's me. so weird. It's so creepy. <laughs> I just love that I have somebody to talk to about this that isn't the same four people that I talk to about this. So that was fantastic. I appreciate that a great deal. You don't know how many pictures he sends me of different ways of just acknowledging that. The little memes, I get text from I him. I send him Daniel Bryan, Chris Benoit memes daily. That, that's, I sit at work and just send him for Daniel, Daniel Bryan, Chris Benoit pictures. Eight, uh, one with the cross face. Yeah. Both one with the cross face. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think of the network? It's fantastic. I'm, I was... I'm, I'm, I'm absorbed. I, I, I'm addicted. I watch Legends. I, I am there. I watch Legends House. I love that shit. I... Legends House. Dude, Tony Atlas never stops eating. Every <laughs> single... <laughs> Every shot of Tony, Tony Atlas, he's snacking. And he, he says, I'm going to be Piper when yes. I get older. I'm just going to be fucking... <laughs> that is him, just, oh, I'm going to go take a nap. I'm to it's, he's not nothing. He's just so done with people. He, and he's, he's hacksaw, oh, if that's the case, because he's always making me laugh, so he's hacksaw. It's man. the absolute... I, I love it. I love that the matches are split up, so you can click on the little things, like their chapters. Um... It's it's phenomenal. It's so much stuff for so little well, money. I also love that they have the balls to include Benoit. Though he's like you can't find him by name, but he, but he's yep. there. Yeah. So if you if you want to watch I, a Benoit, he keeps like trying to find good matches, and I keep making him watch awful WCW stuff. Like Scott Hall face Sting. That's all I want. Is or Sting, or where Scott Hall is overselling like a motherfucker. He's trying to say fuck you to Sting in so many ways, and Dusty's like, what are you doing, baby? What are you doing? That's the big man. Get, get your act together, baby. Come on. You like the baby? I think that was Uncle Fred. That was Uncle Fred. Uh, Fell on his ass. <laughs> he got a bicycle. Uh, <laughs> no, it's <laughs> I'm obsessed because I'm obsessed with Scott Steiner. 
Uh, mm. It's literally, I could watch Scott Steiner all day. Nothing in the world makes me happier than Scott Steiner walking that tiger to the ring <laughs> and then punching it on the top of the head to say goodbye to it because he doesn't realize I'm he's got really a fucking tiger <laughs> on a leash. Um, so all I do is watch awful Scott Steiner stuff, terrible EC. Like, I've used the network for nothing but evil. Yeah, the, as soon as I got it, the first thing I did was look up every Dungeon of Doom promo and match ever and just went through it and was just like, Jesus H, man. It was awesome. The first thing I looked for was uh, Rick Steiner arguing with Chucky. <laughs> you get out of here, you doll. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> Oh, what, what else? What else? Did, what else did we watch? It was some, uh, we watched a ton of horse shit. We watched a bunch of Scott Steiner. Um, get behind with the with the bumper grind. Uh, we watched some I watched really bad war the, games. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah, say I watched happen. a bunch of WCW pay per views and stuff. It was ridiculous. All, all the bad Halloween Havoc openings with Tony, with Tony Schiavone. Trying, yeah. Yeah, no, we love the network. It's it's awesome, and I love uh, Legends of Wrestling and the Countdown, and and I like watching people sit around and talk about wrestling because that's what I like yeah. to do. So it's it's really cool to to watch the legends sit. And I talk really about love it. Michael Hayes. Yeah, I could listen to Michael Hayes talk because he he'll start some shit with somebody, like like his Pat Patterson, for example. Pat Patterson was talking about how like I hate hardcore. I I, I hate car. I can't do Pat Patterson, but he has like I hate hardcore, and then he's like, but what about you facing Sergeant Star Sergeant Slaughter? That was hardcore. What about that, Pat? I was like, let's start some shit with Pat Patterson. Uh, I have to say that I do have a new love for Pat Patterson after watching those. Because uh, my um, deal with Pat Patterson was just with him and uh, uh, Briscoe as a part of the faction oh, the back in like the early 2000s, man. So just watching him and watching his old matches... Um, I don't know if you guys saw that match with him and uh, freaking Chicken Wing. What the fuck's his name off the top of my head? Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund in the steel cage when they were trying to unify the Intercontinental and the uh, WWF title. That was fucking awesome shit, man. Oh, Good dude, stuff. he's so brutal. He's such a monster. And if you haven't watched Legends House, you can watch him almost make cabbage. <laughs> but it took too long, and they got mad at him. One of my favorite lines is that they have him do they have him all dancing Zumba and he's like, I'm seventy three years old. What the fuck? <laughs> the best line on Legends House so far is if you haven't watched it, uh the first episode they make them all do like uh meditation and uh fucking their meditation coach is Gary Busey. Uh. Right? And they just cut to Roddy Piper and Roddy Piper goes uh, what's this guy doing here? Is he going to give us fucking motorcycle lessons? <laughs> and, and, and then Rowdy almost got into it with Gary. Yeah. Because he, uh, Gary was pissing him off. And he was all like, God damn it, I want some answers, Yoda. <laughs> it was like, what? I so so love... Legends House is definitely worth a watch, huh? Legends House is so I, My awful. girlfriend likes it. It's... And my girlfriend doesn't like wrestling. And she likes it. It's just, it's... Oh, it's so great. She awesome. even asked me tonight, when's the new episode? I was like, tonight. It's nothing she happens. It. It's great. It's just a it's bunch of old life. guys. Oh, it's tremendous. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so in how can people find out more about you? What links, where do they go um, about Return to Nukem High and everything else? Where should people be heading? What are you doing? What am I, what am I? Your Twitter. Oh, I have a Twitter, yeah, I think. Uh, Vito Trigo. Uh, if you can follow Vito on account. at Vito Trigo, uh, you can follow myself on at Zach is not funny. A at Z A C I S not funny, or if you prefer Zach I S not funny. Uh, another great way to see everything going on uh, with Return to Nukem High would be at Return to Nukem at R E T U R N the numeral two N U K E. E M and that Twitter is going to have all the screenings. Uh, of course, you can add us on Facebook at the Return to Newcom High Volumes One and Two fan page, and you're going to see a, b a bunch of stuff about screenings. And also, please feel free to check out the RumbleCon uh, Facebook fan page, uh, where you can see any screenings we have coming up. But uh, Troma Dance Film Festival, a whole bunch of great stuff coming up, and a whole lot of great ways to see us or be involved with our movies. That's awesome, man. 
Well, thank you guys so much for getting through fucking Google Hangouts and making this happen. Absolutely, yeah, dude. We'd love you. to come back sometime. Have us have us back after SummerSlam. We'll bitch some more. <laughs> oh, you got it, man. SummerSlam, All right. Or I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Take care, dude. Thanks for having us, bro. Yeah.